So I like to apologize if I smell uh, like champagne. David, huge, huge congratulations. How special is this? Yeah, of course it is. I think everybody knows that the last time that this club was in the Premier League is 45 years ago. and. Um, not a lot of people, or the people who can uh, remind about it, are very old. So um, this is a big, big achievement, and I'm so happy, so proud about my players, my group, and I'm happy for the whole town, every employer who helped Huddersfield Town to make the steps forward, and of course, especially for the chairman who backed nearly all of my ideas, even when he thought. Uh, Maybe it's ridiculous. He said, okay, come on. If you are sure, we do it. And um, now we, we've done it. So we set no limits. Now we know where our limit is. The limit is in the Premier League. We are very happy. Even when I like to say that this competition, if you win it, it's great. But uh, the other three teams, they played such a great season, especially Reading. Today did a fantastic job and played a very, very good season. And Unfortunately, they are in the championship next season again. So this is a very hard competition, to be fair. And my thoughts are with the other three teams as well. You had a very small budget relative to the rest of the teams in the championship, which was about £12 million. Pounds. What does that say about the championship and how football teams, if they're coached well and play well with players with the right mentality, can, can achieve? It's much less than £12 million, pounds, to is be it? fair. <laughs> but uh, again, um, we said we, we wanted to leave our comfort zone because if we are not able to leave our comfort zone, we will not be competitive. And I asked the player a lot of time where they had to leave the comfort zone and they, they did it. Uh, and it's great that, 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 that they get paid off, uh, paid back something for what they invested. And, uh, we said this before, we wanted to find new ways to be competitive. I, I'm so happy that we have proven that experience is not everything, especially here in England, maybe because England is so traditional. Since I arrived, I was only always in confrontation with uh, experience, no experience, no experience in English football, ex no experience in the league, no experience in winter break, uh, no experience in playoffs. <laughs> experience is important. But if you have passion, desire, and an idea, you can match it. And uh, I'm, I'm so happy that we have proven that this is possible and that we brought this fairy tale to a happy end. And uh, it makes me unbelievably happy. You will be a Premier League manager. How does that sound? Yeah, it's OK. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I haven't thought about it, to be fair, uh, even uh, about my personal standing uh, rather than the standing of uh, individual players or the whole club. This was nothing what was in my head and uh, will not come today in my head, to be fair. Uh, today it's only celebration and uh, we were only focused on, on this final. And yeah, they, they've done it. And uh, I said to the players before the playoffs, you, you are heroes. What you've done, you are fifth in the league, played an unbelievable season. The small Huddersfield town, you made so many players proud. You, you are heroes. But from here to zero in football, sometimes it's only a week. And you have the opportunity to become legends. And they've done it. So there are now legends for sure. Everybody will remind about this group of players, what they've done with what small budget they've done it. And they deserved it. It wasn't a fluke. So. There were so many setbacks for us in the past. We had so many problems, especially because we didn't have the biggest squad together. But we were totally independent from everything what was not uh, around us or the circumstance. We only trusted and believed in ourselves. And it's so happy that this came to a happy end. Have you had a chance to do any contingency plan in case you were in the Premier League, or does it all start now? Uh, of course, I made my head around, but to be fair, as nearer as the playoffs came, as more it went into the back of my head, because my focus was only first on Sheffield and 
than now on this final reading. So we were in the playoffs, I think, two or three weeks before the end of the season. This was the time where I thought a little bit uh, what we can do, what will we do. But in the last three, four weeks, it was not in my head. And I like to leave it away, to be fair. At least till tomorrow, hopefully, I'm able to leave it uh, uh, far away a little bit longer to, to enjoy and to celebrate what we've done so far. Will you be able to be loyal to the group of players you have or will you have to strengthen significantly if you think to compete in the program? Again, this is exactly what I don't like to think about at the minute. I only like to think about what they've done and uh, everything what is in front of us, I think there will be enough time. David, what's going through your head when Michael Hepworth misses a penalty? What he has to save one. Listen, we, are, we have experience in penalty shootouts after the semifinal. And of course, it's, it's one or it's the tightest decision you can have in football, penalty shootout. We had it twice. We won it twice. I think when we've seen the 120 mi minutes we deserved to, to win this football match, I think we had the bigger chances even when we changed our game plan against Reading. Reading is so strong in ball possession, it makes no sense to to press them high and to chase them, you will waste your energy because they are so good that you will not touch the ball. So this was the reason why we said, okay, we wanted to sit deeper, play from the transition, from the counter-attack, and I think it worked out over a big part of the of the game. We had two very good opportunities from Izzy Brown and, and Hef, and the third one later from Naki. <coughs> I think... We, we, we did it well, and at the end, as I said, penalty shootouts are always very tight decisions. And we had Wardy, and I said to the players before the penalty shootout, listen, boys, uh, it's the easiest thing for you, this group, to put the ball from 12 yards into the net. And now, you work 10 months, and you have the chance, the opportunity <coughs> to come into the Premier League and for this, you only have to put the ball from 12 yards into the net. So look on this easy challenge and this great opportunity you have and take the ball and put it in. So everybody who said to you, come on, you come in the Prem, if you put the ball from 12 yards into the net, will raise his hands and say, yes, okay, give me this opportunity. And they had the opportunity and they used it. You said you never practiced penalties before Sheffield Wednesday. Did you practice penalties before today? No. Uh, we haven't uh, done this yesterday some players took some penalties, but this wasn't my advice. They only took some penalties. I was pretty surprised, to be fair, as uh, when Shindy came and stand beside me and said, okay, i like to take the fifth one. I, 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 I thought, okay, it's you, Shindy. <laughs> but uh, he was totally confident and wanted to have the fifth one. Usually I had Casey in my head, and he took it and he put it in. So credit to him. Yeah, I hear it over the whole week that the, the shop uh, sold more and more tickets and I, I hear it from the people who are much more longer connected with this football club than I, than I am that this is something extraordinary, something unusual. And I followed uh, today in the hotel uh, our homepage and I saw the tweets when the whole highway was blue and white and uh, the railways, uh, the, the stations, the fuel stations were full of occupied with Huddersfield Town supporters. And when we arrived or when we drove from the hotel to the stadium, it was an unbelievable atmosphere. And uh, today I, uh, I, didn't have to, I didn't have to do so much in terms of motivation. They, they were totally on fire. And I think we've seen this today. I haven't spoken with him, but if Tommy goes out of the grass, it is something serious. Hopefully, not as serious uh, as it be as it is that he is not able to uh, start the preseason. But uh, I haven't no further information at the minute. David, can I just ask you? It's going to be Arsenal, Manchester United, Chelsea, Liverpool, Spurs coming to Huddersfield next season. How special will that be for you, for the players, and, and for the town? Of course it is special. So we, we've, we met Man City in the season in the Cup. So we had a 
okay cup run as well in the season. Uh, now I think about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it will be great. So, but this is, again, I think I need a few weeks uh, that I really feel how great this is. And uh, then we will, we will prepare us like we've done for all the other championship games as well. And we are happy uh, that Huddersfield Town are able to be a part in the Premier League. I mean, I know you're not going to look too much to the future, but given that Danny has saved three penalties in two shootouts, do you think that one of the calls you might have to make this summer will be to Jürgen to ask if you can keep him for another year? I think I have a lot of calls to do, to be <laughs> fair. And I, maybe this is why I don't like to make my head around it, because I know how much work is in front of me. So there are a few phone calls, and I will speak with Jürgen for sure as well. Not only about Danny, uh, about everything what happens. So uh, let's, let's give me some time to, to make my head around what is in front of us. And uh, then... This is as well something I haven't thought about. Yes, uh, I probably will meet him on the sideline <laughs> in the Premier League. It, 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 it will be funny for sure. When we had the friendly, he was the first manager. He came in my manager office before the game and we uh, drank a cola. So uh, I'm unsure if this happens in a Premier League match again, but from my point of view, I think um, it could happen. <laughs> Yeah, to be fair, if the whistle starts and the game starts, um, he and me either sometimes are out of control. Even if he's my pal, uh, I, I don't have to agree with everything what he what he is doing. So, but we will see. Yeah, my first, my next step is shower, take a shower, for sure. <laughs> so, and then we, we, we drive back to, to Huddersfield. And to be fair, I, I've known not more. Uh, I think we will celebrate tonight for sure what happens tomorrow. I have no idea. I, I, I'm not involved, but I'm totally sure that we have some very smart, intelligent, proud, happy people. They organize something and... This uh, should be a celebration which uh, everybody has waited 45 years for, so uh, should be one of the better ones. No problem to speak with all my friends from Germany. <laughs> so. Ah, <laughs> okay. Uh, I said this before. We all together know this business. If, if you are successful, they praise you. And if you are unsuccessful, they, they, they blame you or they kick you. So uh, I think this football club has written an unbelievable story. This fairy tale, even if I speak about it, I cannot believe it, what, what happened. Uh, when, when you've seen where we started and when you see how, how big the dog in this division are, which we left behind us. And anything else, again, what happens uh, in the next season, we will see. David, what did you uh, make of Aaron Moy today? And um, how important has he been to you this season? Yeah, he, he was an outstanding player for us in this season. I said this before, Aaron is, is the heart of our game. He is able to decelerate when necessary or accelerate the game uh, if you need it. He's so comfortable and calm on the ball and has developed his fighting attitude since he arrived because he arrived as a number 10 and usually number 10s are not the best fighters. Uh, now, uh, since he played a little bit deeper, he, he has a great fighting attitude as well. So you usually not find often a player who is so comfortable on the ball and has such a great fighting attitude. And he is one of uh, an outstanding player we had in the season. And we are very happy that he was with us. And maybe this is a further phone call I have to do. <laughs> Would you like him to stay? Would you like him to, to be able to sign off? 
Yeah, of course. I would like to have Aaron Moy. I like to. Uh, I would like to have all of my players with me in the next season. What is possible, we will see. But as I said, uh, give me a few days' time to think about it. Let's say it was a starting point to develop this togetherness and uh, to bound this group together. And over the 10 or now f nearly 11 months where we are together, this bounding and togetherness uh, grows up more and more. This was only a starting point. It isn't as easy only to go to Sweden and then you will be successful. But it was a small detail which helped us to find together maybe quicker than you usually find together as a football team. Uh, then we did some further things as a football club. So we created a family day. We created a stadium, a family area. We brought the missus's girlfriends, women's and child's to, to a training camp in Marbella. And now before the playoffs, we brought them together to, to Portugal. So this is, this is a real strong group we have there, not only in the dressing room, even uh, the partners as well. And this, sh they, they have shown to the outside and this as well have shown the whole football club to be fair over the season. Just, you've had a bit of fun, I think, with Pierre Holloway. <laughs> 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 Is it personally that he's satisfying because I suppose when you came in, people may have been saying, you know, we don't know that much about David Blackman, now we all know about No, it isn't personal, so... Uh, uh, Best regard to Ian Holloway, and uh, he was probably not the only pundit who thought, okay, we will get relegated before the season. And to be fair, lately after the preseason, I was totally sure we will not be in relegation trouble. So I'm experienced enough uh, to know how strong this group was, that this group will not be in relegation trouble. That we developed and improved as quick as we did, I think this is credit to the player and to the backroom staff. Uh, but this isn't personal. I know that pundits sometimes they have to say something. Sometimes they they haven't said it, and it's written because it's easier for <laughs> for the other guy. So uh, I'm happy that he delivered me an opportunity, which I sometimes used in my meeting, especially when we played QPR. And he was the manager of QPR, so it was easy for me to motivate my players after what he said before the season. But this isn't personal. Everything okay. David, you've seen some smaller teams apart from the Premier League the last couple of years. Bournemouth, Burnley have managed to solidify themselves. Is there any club that's been a, a model in the back of your mind that you would like to come to follow them? No, I'm not experienced enough. <laughs> I, I have no experience about Bournemouth, Burnley. I know a little bit about the clubs, but I haven't followed their story, how how they came to the stage. I know that Burnley got promoted, relegated and promoted back, but I think, and I said this before, we have to be focused on ourselves, and this football club has to be focused on, 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 on themselves. I think this football club created now an identity, and this was always our target that we, we create an identity in a style of football where maybe even if we have neutral jerseys, uh, the, the, the people from outside are able to say, okay, it could be Huddersfield which is playing there. And I think it makes no sense to compare us with the other small clubs you said, like Bournemouth or Burnley. We have, this football club has to create his own story and uh, I think they are on the way. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, then I have to praise now uh, our commercial department for the slogan. So, But I'm, I'm still not happy about it because I don't like to, to, to focus success on one player or person this is a team which 
brought this over the line and this was the reason why I wasn't happy about uh, this slogan. But I like to praise now official our commercial department for all the ideas they had over the last 12 months. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you.